Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you tell the audience uh, what we're going to be discussing today? You're going to educate me. Now, that is a first, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> I could see, I thought you'd like that. So uh, you might have noticed it's event season, and uh, my my LinkedIn and social feeds are awash with Sasta, with Inbound, with Web Summit, with CMO Summit, and all of these things. It seems like they all come at once. For some reason, they don't spread out. So um, there's several types of events. I've been to a handful, and they've all been kind of similar. And, um, and what you do with them in the follow-up is similar because of that. But you've been to a lot more than me, so I wanted you to come and sit and uh, and teach me. There's a lot of different types, so so maybe we can start with this. What types of event are there in terms of what do you get as an exhibitor if you go? Now, I've seen where you, you stand at a booth and you have foot traffic coming along and you try and talk to people and you scan the badge. And the badge means, or, or the, uh, the lanyard, whatever, and that means you get their contact information, you then do what you want afterwards. I've also seen where you don't have that and you've got to try and find another way of following up and getting their details in the same type of format. And then there's other events where you just plainly get the whole um, registration list or, or attendees list because you pay like whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's other events. I know there's some where you don't get any of that. I know there's some where if you run it yourself, you're kind of hiring out a venue. There's none of that at all. Uh, what, what other types of events are there that you've been to that you're trying to follow up on? Well, I would say there's, you know, in, inside those events, there's always those lunch and learns that happen, those uh, breakout sessions. So there's a lot of different things that can go on um, at those events. But the most common one I find lately has been that barcode one. Um, it's interesting because like, I, I, I do like it, but at the same time, I feel like you almost feel like some people get like a quota from their boss and they just walk around yeah. trying to run around and scan as many without even talking to you. I so, do exactly the same as what you just did, that R, that you do, that kind of sigh. When I've been there and someone said, hey, can I just scan your badge? It's, so, it's like socially awkward. You yeah. Like it. Like, I'm not going to say no because what kind of douchebag am I? But like, okay, fine. I know that that means you're going to just harass me now. So Yeah. Like, great. And, and see, I think, I think something better to do if you do have a booth is have some sort of like iPad out where people can put their emails. But at least right after then, you can go behind and make notes. Because... My biggest thing is like, you know, I've, I've collected many business cards at conferences. Like when I come home, it's like, I have them all. I'm like, unless I write something on the back of that business card, be like, Hey, um, person's interested in this. This is like, you just get so confused because Hey, you're traveling. So you're, you're there, you're in the conference. Then you got to fly home. You might have to see your family. And then your mind just goes and it's like, okay, I got these 18 business cards. What did I talk to this one about? And it's like, you almost have to reach out and start the prospecting again. So I think that's the one thing. And you, you did talk about events. And I, I know a lot of people have this debate. Personally, I've never had too big of an ROI from an event. Um, my new theory, this is my new theory on event, is if you're going to sponsor it or have a booth. And this is only my new theory. You either go big or go home. Meaning yeah. you either go all in, have the biggest center booth at the event with a speaking gig, or you just don't go to be one of those sideline, you know, uh, you know, little small booths by the by the by the buffet section where people are just going to come up there while they're having their hot dog and start looking at your stuff. You either go big or you go home. One of the two. So I think there's two different areas to do it. Um, I know a company I used to work for, not even a SaaS company, and they used to have the biggest right in the center. Nobody was around them, and it was just them, and they killed it. But then I look at all the, the ones I've done with you know different companies, and it's just like we were that corner side booth, and it just it didn't work out, or we didn't get a return on our investment. Yeah, the, there's a thing now. Any event that I've been to, the majority of people, and, and what really strikes me is I see particularly the Sasta pictures, which has just taken over my social media feeds. Ninety nine percent of SaaS people are not SaaS companies. They're selling to SaaS companies, so they're just kind of there for like the part of being at the being a part of it a little bit. So it's not like to we're say you sell, were there. Yeah, like I'm not going to sell to Oracle or something. There, I've gone to like meet my other part of the industry friends. Like by by proxy, as a software company, we are part of the software industry. And even if I did some freelancing with software companies, I'm by proxy a part of it again. So I think a lot of it's that. 
And that's that's funny because I see people who go to all of these trade shows and, and they're expensive tickets as well. A lot of oh, them. yeah. Sometimes they're free, but they're going there to like talk to the people who are paying to exhibit there. But you're just getting like the salespeople. So I've rarely even seen that work. It, it yeah. seems kind of like guerrilla and clever, but you're just getting, you might get one senior person. You know what? Booth. In the age of social media, all these events are is for people to take pictures with people that are either Their our friends. favorite word, Ollie, the influencer, yeah, yeah. or just to take a picture. But at the end of the day, two weeks later, the person you know is taking 100 pictures. I think there's that. Now, I've been at so many events where it's almost like you go, A, you know, unless you have the booth, most times it's not the CEO that's walking the, the, around. So you're, you're, you're speaking to somebody that can't even make the decision. B, you know, I've been at booth, I've been at some of these events where they've sold me a booth and they've told me and promised me, you know, this person, this person, this person will be here. These exactly the ICP that we had. And this was a, a company about eight years ago. And I remember going, so I remember we were actually selling email archiving. I'll tell you what we were selling. We we're selling email archiving to universities. And what they actually had there was where we sold to the IT people at the schools in the booth and walking around were actually teachers. So right. we had a booth. Not one person at the event was even a buyer, but they sold us on, we're going to have 2000 universities from the U S there. And they did, but you had the teachers where I needed the IT people who wanted to talk about security and archiving. Um, I've been in other events where I've been promised, Oh yeah, we are a B2B event. And then you go there and everyone there is, they're selling B2C. So as I said, I think you gotta, you gotta, I think you, you're better off picking to choose two or three and being the premium sponsor than being a sponsor at a silver sponsor, at eight different events. Yeah, that's what I've seen as well. Even um, I, I've only been to two or three that were um, delayed from COVID while, while here at Vanilla Soft. So I think they sort of, in a way, don't count. They were first events back post COVID. So we kind of had the money locked in, anyways. Um, but previous to that, I'd been to one of the same shows as um, as an agency company. So cash flow is a lot different to software. And um, the whole idea of going was to record the speaking engagement and get loads of like B roll for our website on the day. The um the video guy was sick, so he didn't go. So that was about 10k down the drain for the entire reason of going. And then um you had like five people staying in hotels, so that's say 100, 150 pounds a night by five for two nights, that's like a couple thousand. Then you have train tickets and Costa and Starbucks and all that stuff. We had a dinner out, a night out. Like the money got stupid for a company who was literally no one in the space. Like yeah. unless you, like you said, if you're a big company and you're like we're going to meet everyone who's a big deal. We're going to shake hands and we're going to easily make the money back because we're the big thing there. Cool. I agree. But also, like you said, it's if you're like hanging on around the edge, the opportunity cost is like, it, it's getting really bad for you at that point. Oh, yeah. I, I do agree. And, and you know, you, you know how I feel about the whole, you know, going there, taking pictures, telling people I was, I was in a room with so on and so forth, where for me, I don't need a picture. I'd rather spend that five seconds and ask that person a question. Meaning, I see, you know, Steve Warren Buffett, somebody did. I haven't seen a picture of you and David Cancel. I know you met him at an event and you asked him some pricing um, problems and, and that you've told me about that. Um, that story is a good story, but you never had a picture and you never posted no. it. So I met, I met David Cancel actually when he was, when he was starting out. Uh, he left HubSpot and he was starting out um, with Drift. And we were at an event, he was speaking. And I literally went up and everyone, there was a lineup of people just taking pictures. And I actually went up and I'll tell you guys today what exactly I asked them. I asked them, I said, David, I'm starting a, a software. This was when I started our clothes. How much do I charge my users from day one? And his number one thing that still resonates with me, he goes, something. He goes, Sean, ask your first 50 clients what they would pay for your software. And whatever number they say, you sell it for. Meaning you want it for 10, done, 20, done. And to this day, I still, I still once in a while I reach out to him and just thank him because he actually got the business off the ground with the, those comments. And I could have been there taking pictures, putting on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and all the other ones and let everyone know in the world I hung out with David Ketzel, even though, you know, at that time, you know, Drift was just kind of starting out. But no, I'd rather spend that five seconds and even, even, you know, Saster, I'm not going to mention some names, but I see all these people on 
every channel just taking pictures with people. And I'm like, those people have been there and done that. You're taking a picture with that person. But you, if it's me, I want to be in that person's shoes. How do you get there? You're not worried about your pictures. You're worried, how am I going to get my business to the next level? How am I going to get my department to the next level? And the only way to do that is by asking those people questions. You have five seconds with them. And instead of asking them a valuable question that can give you an asset, you're trying to get a picture. It bothers me. You know how I feel about it, Ollie. That's I my do. rant. That's the, I do. that's the rant. All right. So um, that was a little bit of a sidebar, but a fun one. You could tell us a little bit of passion here about that. So let's say you're a rep going to an event. So yeah. let's hope that you're going to the big event and you're the big sponsor, like we just said. Otherwise, I think it becomes very difficult, though the practice of what you will do afterwards is quite similar. I'll give you the two scenarios and I'd like to know what you would do with each. So you're going to the big event and you've got the, the lanyard scanning method. That's number one. And the other event, it does not have that. How do you get the most out of it? And what do you do afterwards? Because you're still going to want to talk to them afterwards. You're still going to have to have notes in some way or another. So that, that's two different problems you're going to have to deal with there. And then basically you're in amongst all of the other vendors who say, hey, Sean, great to meet you at insert event because that's the only context we all have yep. in common how do, how are you going to make anything good of that because that's what i always okay. think is very difficult so let's start with a few things so first you talk about the barcode so the barcode is one thing that you can use in the booth but now let's just say you didn't have the barcode and you're going to a booth and i know it's gonna cost me a lot of money here's exactly how i would do it ollie bill and kevin the three of you guys want to go to the san fran disaster this week right okay First person to book 10 meetings at the event, you guys are the one, you're the one flying on meeting. Meaning, I think the work has to be done before the event. The barcode thing is great, but you have to do the work before. So telling, telling Ollie and saying, Ollie, book 10 meetings at the event with 10 different customers, prospects, clients, whatever it is. Then you book your flight because then you're going there, A, with the booth, but you're going there with a reason. And that's the biggest problem is people go there and just expect, I'm at the event. I'm going to socialize and talk to people. Where the days go so quick, you're staying on your feet for nine hours. And by the end of the day, you don't really want to socialize for two hours at the, the, the dinner because you've already been staying on your feet at the booth for nine hours. That's the first thing. Now, the barcode thing. The barcode thing is great. But with the barcode, don't just give your barcode out. If the person comes asking for your barcode, how can I help your business? How can you help my business? If we can't help each other's business, don't waste my time. I don't want to waste yours. And be honest, because what's going to happen is you're going to do the follow-up emails and be like, well, I got 15 leads from the event. Well, yeah, but only two people are actually potential customers or prospects. So I think that's the groundwork that needs to be really be done. And when you're at the event, the key is to have those valuable conversations. But as I said, I think those valuable conversations have to happen before the event, right? You have to build those rapport and build that trust and have them come to your booth before the event. Let them know where your booth is at. So I always say the most important thing is the six weeks before an event and not at the actual event. Yeah, you're right. The, anytime I've been to an event, the best, the best rep there, the best person there was hardly there because they were outside in the coffee shop having meetings lined up all day. And when they came back at the end, we're like, where the hell have you been? And yeah, I had like six meetings in a row. And we're like, oh, oh yeah, that would have been a good idea. So that's, that's totally true. Um, the one thing that you've got to work out how is how do I find the people that are going? So that's one thing. Do you get a pre-registration list that might help you? But um, if not, how else can you find that out? Because you may not find that much on social media. Of what? Of the person? Yeah. So if if we're going to Sastra in two weeks' time, yeah. something like that, and I want to start doing my pre-reaching out yeah. booking meetings, how would I know that you're going to be there if I haven't been given the list by the company? Great question. You go on their website, you can probably sometimes find out who the sponsors are usually before an event. Right. You find out who the sponsors are. Then so the you speakers, kind of, and then you know that team's going to be there. You go to the speakers, you go to the sponsors. And then from there, sometimes you can look at even the sponsors and be like, oh, okay, well, this is the ICP of these people. So we're probably going to get uh, a bunch of these people. And then what I would do is an email campaign saying, hey, head in the next week in San Fran. See you actually live in California. Uh, you know, and get a list of California people in the software industry. Are you heading over there? Oh, no. Have you been before? Oh, no, I haven't been. Oh, do you know anyone? You know, do you know anyone that's been that that had any good experience here? 
Oh yeah, I know Bill went there. Oh, what company does Bill work for? Boom, you have a company that's been there and might be there again. So there's different ways to really do that. But you know, just sending a cold email and asking, you know, even asking your client base if you're going to be there is a great option because you have a bunch of clients. You'll always find. I remember it was, um, I think it was Elevate in Toronto. It was Elevate? It was, it was actually, you know, funny enough. It's a, I think there's one in the UK in Toronto. It's a big tech conference. It's in September here in Toronto. And I remember one year we didn't have the tickets. It was a thousand dollars each, and we bootstrapped our company. And it was downtown by the uh, uh, downtown Toronto. And what I actually did was, I actually just had my team pretend we were going to the event, sit right outside the event on the couches. Each couch it was seats of four, four, and four. We each took one seven thirty in the morning, and we just booked meetings all day. And people thought we were at the event. We actually didn't have access into the into the into the event at all. We just sat there because it was a 10-minute drive from our office and do it. So, again, that was all done before, all through email, through calling, through LinkedIn, you know. And there's always ways to find out, especially with some of the data, uh, the gray data in the world. You can always find out who's been at previous events, et cetera. Yeah, I, uh, I've done similar. So at the B2B Marketing Expo, I think it was called, that's in London in the Excel Center, uh, it's a really long, like rectangular building. And the middle are cafes and burger bars and coffee shops. And then the left and the right side are these huge like exhibit halls. So everyone meets in the middle for a drink before and after. So all my meetings were like not in the room. They were in the lobby in yeah. the middle. So I could have got in there for nothing, even though the event was free. And um, I, I kind of did the same thing. I looked at all the speakers and the sponsors and I picked out, okay, that company is like a good fit. That one's not, I want to meet them anyway. So I'll do that. And then I looked at... um. They have like exhibiting lists. So that's another big long list of all the companies and you have to go one by one. Who's that? I know who they are and so on. Then the last thing I did, a bit speculative, but I looked at the pictures from last year and saw the other exhibitors who I couldn't match. Or, you know, like I'm looking at one side of my screen, the names who are going and then the pictures on the other side. And I'm going, oh, that company. I, I know two people there. Yeah. Whip up an autoclose campaign with the names of the emails because I know the people. Hey, you were at the thing last year. We're going... Any chance you go in this year? And, and a couple of them came through like that. So it was quite easy to just knock that out quite straightforward and easy because you can literally see it. You just have to do the grunt work of like list, name, yep. email, write email, go. But that's basically your job anyway. I just yep. described what you do for prospecting. So yeah, and, and you know what? Another another you know thing that I used to do just to stand out at the events. Um, and I'm going to give a shout out. So when I actually uh, I met with him in Toronto when I started, Jamie Shanks. Um, and he always said that, you know, how he grew his first business was he was the peacock at the event. What I mean by peacock is he would be the guy wearing yellow shoes. Yeah, you've got to wear something that stands out. I've seen this before. So, People wear like green suits. The, the, you look at them like, what the hell exactly. are you wearing? But you remember them. Exactly. So, you know, and, and my whole theory is if, um, if, you, if you weren't remembered, you weren't there. Right. So uh, there's different different things to do. And I think, I think we can definitely probably have a part two of this because I'm sure we can go into stories. And maybe we want to bring some people on and talk about some different, uh, different um, things they do at events because I know everyone has their own way. I know there's some companies that say they get a huge ROI at an event where I'm just like, you know, I've been through many events in my life. And I, I mean, maybe we've broken even on a few, but I've never seen us really get that return on the investment. Yeah, I think it's difficult, especially if you have a long sales cycle as well. It's hard to actually draw a line and say, what influence did that have? Or was it just the first meeting or or that type of thing? Or was it really having FaceTime that did the job or that kind of thing? But um, I'd be interested to know like, from an event organizer's perspective, what have they seen the really best vendors do that is different from the rest that actually really helped? Because I, I kind of like you, I think it gets expensive quickly unless you are really invested in it doesn't matter what it costs we're a big company and we're going to do it i think it gets just so expensive compared to everything else that you do that it just looks bad on paper anyway yeah uh you know what i actually think um i'm going to bring a sas north event that i've been at many years uh, i've become very good friends with david um the uh, ceo of q business media and you know what i'm gonna do we're gonna get him on the show and then we're yeah. gonna ask him so i'm gonna reach out to him right after this and then in the next few weeks we'll uh We'll have that podcast for you guys. Cool. Well, let's do that. And uh, I think that'll be a good place to wrap up. We've been going about 20 minutes and uh, I've learned a little bit about how best to do it and how not to do it. So uh, this was a good one. Perfect. 
Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. This has been another great episode with Ollie. And thank you for everybody listening. If you enjoyed today's show, don't forget to give us that five-star review wherever you're listening from. Subscribe so you don't miss the next show and the next episode um, that we will be talking about uh, trade shows. Thank you so much.